his giant surprise. He's a Giants Causeway out of an AP Indy mare. He was the leading Northeast freshman sire in 2015. He was ranked sixth nationally, which was the same freshman sire group as Uncle Mo and Twirling Candy, so that was very stiff competition that year. First crop earnings were over 800,000, which really smoked any other stallion in New York that year. Four stakes horses in his first crop, and he had two stakes winners, one Colt and one Philly. Both of those stakes winners repeated stakes wins in 2016, Sudden Surprise and Super Surprise. His yearling average in 2015 was 50,000. His yearling average last year was 24,000, and that was a very small group of horses. I think there were only three offered at auction. Honorable Dylan is coming out. Dylan is a tappet out of a shy Tom mare. He's got a big Argentinian family. He's a half-brother to champion 40 Greta. Great two stakes winner, he won the Hutchison. He brought 170 mares in his first year in 2015. His first weanlings averaged 18,000 last year, and he had a short yearling that sold at OBS this week for 13,000, which was a really good price at that sale. He's a DeWild cat out of a Woodman mare. He was the second leading sophomore sire in the Northeast in 2016. 32 runners, 19 winners, and he had two stakes winners last year, both a two and three year old stakes winner. Earnings were nearly 940,000 in his first crop. He has, now has lifetime earnings over a million. Play Me a Memory just won at Aqueduct yesterday, and she is headed to the Barber Fritchie at Laurel next month. So he could have a great stakes horse here very soon. This is Micromanage. He's a Medallia Doro out of a Flying Pastor Mare. Multiple grade stakes winner of nearly 800,000. He had his first bowl this week here. It's here in the barn if anybody wants to see it. It's a filly out of the grade three stakes play Stop Spinning Maria. He bred 72 mares in his first year, and we sold 19 breeding rights to the horse, so he will be, he'll continue to be strongly supported. We do have one breeding right left in the stallion if anyone's interested. We will continue to offer that for this year only. Soaring Empire is coming up next. He's an empire maker out of an AP Indy mare, who's the third leading freshman sire in the Northeast in 2016. It eight starters and two winners, including Deermaker, who was fourth in the Damon Runyon Stakes at the end of the year last season, ran fourth to two Uncle Mo's. This is the great big family of Verrazano. There are 13 greatest stakes winners in the first two dams. His two-year-old average was over 40,000 last year, including a $110,000 two-year-old who's not yet started. He's the only son of Empire Maker in New York. This is Trinaberg. He is a Tufelsberg out of a gold miner's gold mare. He has his first two-year-olds running this year. He was the first Eclipse champion ever retired directly to the state of New York. Trinaberg's owner and trainer has several of his first crop in training in Florida, and he's very pleased with his group. We will continue to offer Breed Secure, which is a program that was initiated by B. Wayne Hughes at Spinthrift. It basically protects your investment if you'd like to breed to the horse and sell. This is War Dancer, our new guy. He is a war front out of an alley deed mare. He's one of only three millionaire sons of Warfront at Stud and is leading earner on the turf. The other two are Declaration of War, whose stud fee is 35,000, and Summerfront, who stands for 10,000 in Kentucky. Warfront is the sire of number six leading freshman sire, The Factor. First crop earnings were nearly $1 million. We have lifetime breeding rights available and limited availability, 7,500 standard nurse, and there is a $200 fee due at breeding. He currently has 45 mares in his book, and they are going to limit him to 100. We try to pick out a stallion that fits the confirmation of our mare. I mean, we don't just pick them based on who's hot. We pick them how they match up physically with our mares. Uh, so many times, if they don't start out hot as a two-year-old, their offspring, that people give up on them, and they shouldn't. The incentives for breeding to an in-state stallion is huge. I mean, that's why we're here. There's, there's no comparison why you would not breed um, to an in-state stallion. There's proven horses that can do very well. You have big racing outfits that's here, that's here to stay and that will support you with what you're doing. You know, there's people that breed in Kentucky, but their program is completely different. They're in a different level that they want to do it uh, than what the people are doing in New York.